There are so many videos on YouTube that show you how to make a good product video at home. This talented dude has amassed over 2 million subscribers teaching pretty much just that. So if you don't feel fully satisfied after today's learnings on just how I made my first studio shot product video at home, then it's worth giving his channel a look. Earlier this year, my friend Ash and I worked on a couple of corporate videos for our new Canadian friend Dwayne's employer, tech company Suprema. Having been initially approached himself, but having no relevant corporate work in his portfolio, Ash very kindly handed the work over to me. And that recently led to an inquiring from the company's headquarters in Korea, based on their liking of the quality of these pretty straightforward looking case study videos. They wanted to know if I had any examples of product videos. With very little to no product work in my portfolio, I really had to scrape the corporate barrel of yesteryear in order to find a couple of clips that would sell them to the fact that I could make this video. After I got sign off, here's what they ended up with. Did you like that? Then how about liking this video and I'll tell you more. I can wait. The budget wasn't good. £1,500 all in, and I had to push back to get them to agree even on this much. But as I'm fortunate enough to have a lot of my own kit and to have the space to shoot at home, I didn't think I'd need too much to pull this off and add a product video to my previously lacking in product work portfolio. I turned my home into a makeshift studio for the week, so I could work on it as and when in between balancing other projects, as well as having the option to try things and reshoot stuff if it wasn't working once I got it into After Effects. I spent £140 renting a probe lens for a day. £60 on a not rubbish turntable with adjustable speed via a remote control. I was about to spend £65 on a small black colour armour for the shoot, but when the shipping fees brought the total to £120 and I saw any profit I was going to make from the job reducing even further, it prompted me to remember that I've actually got a massive cut of black duvetine that I bought a while back now. So I made it work with that instead. And in total honesty, I ended up rotoscoping everything anyway, so the background was a lot less important, but black would definitely have still been the way to go. I had thought about green screening it to save on roto time, but doing what I wanted to try with the lighting in camera, I wasn't confident that I'd have enough space in my house to create the separation needed in order to achieve the lighting effect and still light the green screen properly. I literally shot this thing with one top light, which at first was an old school light panel one by one, and then later swapped out for an aperture 300D as I needed some more output for the probe lens, which has a max aperture of f14. I also gave it a little extra boost on some of the more intimate close-ups of the circuit board using my little aperture MC light. I tried a number of shots panning the top light on and off over the products in order to give them somewhat of a dramatic reveal. Then in After Effects, once everything was masked accordingly, I played around with scale, rotation, I tried adding some overlays and underlays. Underlay! Eventually settling on a very generic stock lens flare, adjusting the opacity of the flare coming in and out until it felt right. I assembled the edit within After Effects, which is not something I'd normally do, but wanted to have everything in one place to get the timings right with the soundtrack I was working to. More than a few hours and days into my week, I realized that I should probably have approached this with a bit more planning. So I set about re-watching some previous examples they had sent me and made myself a bit of a shot list. The macro probe lens really added another dimension to the edit, especially when coupled with the use of the turntable and some small moves on my very basic track and dolly setup. Incredibly frustratingly, something that I did not spot on my 7-inch monitor while shooting, but did become wildly apparent in the edit, were these microscopic dust particles that found their way onto the tip of the probe lens. It was too late. I'd already returned the probe lens to the rental house, but I did attempt some lazy cleanup across a few moments in a slapdash attempt to hide it. Be honest in the comments. You didn't notice it until I pointed it out, did you? There was some other laziness in this project that you may or may not have spotted at the start of the clip and probably put down to bad YouTube compression. See this? It almost looks like banding, like the shutter speed's not getting on with the lighting, but it's not. It's actually because when I first went with the old school light panel one by one, I used a snap grid on the light to keep it from spilling onto the background. But when I then panned the light on and off the product, the lines of the grid became apparent. Now, I didn't notice this until I'd already spent over an hour masking around the first shot of the video, and I decided that if the client didn't spot it, then I could live with myself. Does that make me lazy? Am I a bad person? I have some graph theory that I want to share with you. Time by effort equals reward. And it normally goes something like this in the filmmaking world. Would it have been worth it me taking several hours out of my time to go back, reshoot that shot, and remask it for perfection's sake? Maybe. If this was a spot for Apple to be seen by millions, I'd make sure that the agency and clients saw my keen attention to detail and maybe bring me on for the next project. But it wasn't. 
This video is to sit on LinkedIn and play out behind a stand at Expos. It's for a low paying client who always haggles to pay even less. And if they, as well as the two impartial, everyday, non-video folk that I showed it to didn't spot it, then why should I waste my time on it? Because it's really annoying and now you can't unsee it. But then I remind myself of the graph. You could argue that I should have done the very best with the resources I had at my disposal, regardless of the client or circumstances. You never know who might see something or what it might lead to. But time, guys. It's been a super busy year and it comes to a point where you just have to remind yourself that this is just a job in favour of working till 9pm on a Wednesday night just to correct a mistake that no one else would have ever noticed if you hadn't pointed out on a video on YouTube. Anyway. Back in After Effects, I also added some artificial lights to a number of the shots using Video Copilot's free Sabre plugin. A bit of ambient backlight for some separation and depth, as well as enhancing the actual lights on the products, as a lot of the impact from them was lost when lighting and exposing for the dark black material of the casing. And that's how I made this studio shot product video at home. I hope you found this video helpful and can learn from my mistakes. If you'd like to see more videos like this, then check out this playlist I put together on the process behind a ton of other projects. And for more regular weekly lessons from behind the camera, make sure to subscribe for more semi-helpful tips and interesting insider industry knowledge.